Greg again from Heck Yeah, You Can Cook. We're on location at my friend John's house. This is John. He is the med brewmaster at Naughty Dog Brew. Everybody zoom in right here and see that right here. We're using Naughty Dog beer for today's recipe. It's made of Naughty Dog beef ribs. All right, Naughty Dog beef ribs made with a Scottish ale that you guys call Kilt Lifter, correct? I call it the Kilt Lifter. Kilt Lifter. All right, well, John's going to go ahead and show us how to make this. Uh, as you will see in the next shot, there'll be the ingredients and we'll also have them listed and then he'll go through the actual uh, putting of the ingredients together and show you how he makes this dish. Here's John's going to explain what the ingredients are for today's dish. So we're going to start with beef short ribs. These have been cut into four to four and a half inch sections. You can see that good marbling. It's a very low cost cut of beef most of the time, um, and you can really make a good dish as we're going to show you today. That's about six pounds, you said? That's about six pounds. Okay, what we got here? So we have a standard beer bar, which is celery, onions, and carrots, diced medium. We'll put that in after the ribs have been browned. And uh, then we have a bouquet garnet. We've got thyme, we've got oregano, and we've got rosemary. And we got a whole clove of garlic that we cut the whole bowl cut in half. Whole bowl. All right. Now there's the special ingredient. What we got here? So we have Naughty Dog's famous kilt lifter. Kilt this lifter. is a Scottish ale. Um, For those outside of Pitt County, so that's 32 ounces. So 32 ounce can of Scottish ale. It is um, a nice chocolate and caramel flavored dark beer. So let's see it poured right here, guys. So when you're making this at home, if you don't live in Pitt County, you can get a Scottish ale from a fine brewer. Or you, you guys use Guinness. Yet? You can use Guinness, and no, we do not deliver <laughs> yet. Not delivering yet, okay. There's a beautiful pour right there. Looks like we've got our standard sea salt. I actually am using kosher salt today. Kosher sea salt. I finished with Himalayan pink sea salt on most dishes, but I like kosher for this one because it dissolves better. Okay. Just standard black cracked pepper, and we'll have 32 ounces of beef stock. Perfect. All right, so the first step, you gotta salt and pepper the beef, right? You gotta season it. We're, again, using kosher salt, cracked black pepper. We're gonna use three sides sides and the top. I'm not really worried about seasoning the bone side. We just want the meat seasoned. So, liberal sprinkle and you know beef can handle a decent amount of salt and using kosher has a little less intense flavor. We got them good and salted. The next step is to move to the oven. We've got the Dutch oven heating. We've got two tablespoons of avocado oil. You can use vegetable oil, you can use olive oil. I just like avocado because of the uh, high heat factor. Uh, our intent is to do these in two batches, make sure that they are thoroughly browned and got a good color on them. Because if you don't, they look just like they're pulled meat. We want that Maillard reaction, we want the dark caramelization. And when we get them done, we're gonna take them back out, rest them in this tray, and then start the vegetables. Okay, everybody, John has been browning forever, and I feel terrible because I've just been watching him. So, John, this is what you're kind of looking for, this kind of caramel color. See that nice caramel color across the top? That means you've got a good, good crust on them. You also have got a good crust in this pan, so that when you put these lovely veggies in here, you're going to scrape up some of these dark bits. And it's going to make a really good base. That's the sauce. happy bits, right? Go ahead. Those, those are the happy bits. All right. So the mirepoix, onions, celery, carrots. Ooh, yeah. Turn the heat down a little bit and let those get happy, happy. Now what are we cooking in here? Uh, this is the standard. Uh, Dutch oven? It is a standard Dutch oven. It is an eight quart. Eight quart. I think it's an eight quart cast iron Dutch oven, oven proof, because the last stage of this dish, straight into the oven at 350 for about three hours. And we preheated that oven at 350. Oven. But we'll make sure it was on the bubble beforehand because we've gotten into it again. The oven is 350, ready to go. Everybody, we're going to cook these about five or ten minutes here. 
And uh, as he cooks these down, just make sure you get a translucent color. You want the onions to be almost clear. And then we're gonna have the adding at that time the beer and the tomato paste, which we forgot to mention in the ingredients. <laughs> but we will definitely make sure you have tomato paste. About how much tomato paste? Is One gonna tablespoon. Be? One tablespoon. We'll make sure we add that in the thing. And then you're letting your beef uh, rest over there so it can be right. back into the cooking again. So there's an option in this recipe when you add the tomato paste. You're going to cook it down for three to five minutes. You want it to get a nice dark red color and kind of caramelize so that it doesn't have that normal tomato tartness. Um, at that time, you can add two tablespoons or a tablespoon of flour to help thicken your stock. Um, we're leaving it out. Yes, we're we're leaving leaving it out. we have a gluten sensitive uh, <laughs> uh, consumer today. So if you have anybody gluten sensitive that you're uh, going to be serving this to, you can leave the flour out. And as an option, you can use cornstarch later on if you really want to thicken it or you can reduce the sauce. Um, the last time I cooked this, after it cooked three and a half hours, it was plenty thick. You can also mash these carrots and onions down through a sieve when the sauce is ready, which we'll show later to thicken the sauce as well. All right, we'll be back. Okay, John has added tomato paste. Now he's cooking it down. We got the onions translucent. And so how long do you let this go, John? <laughs> Well, three or four more minutes. It's already been in about two, so yeah. then comes the fun part. Oh, look at this. This is the Scotch Ale going in. And if you're in the eastern North Carolina area, please get this from Naughty Dog Brewery. They call this the Kilt. What is it? The Kilt Lifter. Kilt Lifter. All right, so get the Kilt Lifter. If you're in eastern North Carolina, make a trip to Winterville at Naughty Dog Brewery on Main Street. So we're going to let that come up to a boil. We're going to reduce it by about 25%, maybe 30%. How long would that normally take? It's going to take about 10 minutes. We're basically trying to get the alcohol to cook off and to condense the flavors. We're going to put these ribs back in and any juice that's collected in the pan is going to go in now. And then we're just going to let the heat do its work. Hey everybody, we're All getting right. to the fun part here. John has got this reduced down. He is adding at this time the beef ribs from the pan. There you go. Right into this. This is really just a basically a two dish operation. You got a cookie sheet and then you've got the Dutch oven here. Mm -hmm. right, eight quart. Remember, like I said before, eight quart minimum for just about any kitchen. Anything smaller than that is hard mm -hmm. to work with. Absolutely. And so don't let them set a four quart one in the cooking set. All right, so this is working here and I, I, you said you're going to take the drippings from the pan. This should be this is the gold. There's really not that much in here. Well, so anyway, this is a good thing to show. This is uh, the little extra beef fat going in there. That means that it means that's a good, actually if you don't have a whole lot, that means you've got an excellent sear on the beef because what's happened is it's actually been seared in. And there it goes right there. It's a good close up there. This is what you're looking for here before you put this in this process. All right, John, well, tell us what's going on here. So we're back. This has been boiling pretty steady for about seven, eight minutes. You can see the bone beginning to protrude from the ribs, showing that the meat's beginning to cook. We've reduced the sauce by about 25, 30%. Again, I could let this go a little longer, but we gave it a taste. We really like where it tastes right now. And you know, cooking is about taste. Taste your ingredients, taste it while it's cooking, taste your seasoning. We're ready to put some beef stock in here, put the herbs in it, put it in the oven, and then let it do its thing. Okay, remember it was a whole hog of garlic. He just says, not scientific, the whole bowl. Yeah, whole bowl. Seven or eight strands of thyme, two nice looking strands of rosemary, two and a half, and then you got some oregano on top. Nothing fancy. Up to 32 ounces of beef stock. Remember, our, we're not trying to boil this. So we're not going to cover it completely. We're going to go about half that. We're going to cover it. It's going to go in the oven. 350. There's oven temperature, 350, everybody. We put a cover on it. Well, that's a little hot there, John. It's not too hot, but I just don't want to risk it. Yeah, I understand. Mm. I don't want to drop it. What rack do you put it on? The bottom? So you 
you can see we put this on the bottom rack to give it enough clearance and uh, again 350 three hours three hours 350. once again we are at naughty dog brewery here on heck yeah you can cook this is where the beer is if you're in Pitt County come by you're gonna make this recipe and it's right here ask for the tilt lifter Oh, watch. This is how the pouring process starts. You clean it first with water. I have learned that. And she comes over and she pours the kilt lifter right now. And she'll put this in a growler for you because I don't think you can drive home with this in Pitt County. In this form. There it is. Let me zoom in here. There it goes. So that's what we're cooking with right now today. Alright, John. Looks like you pulled these out. And, uh, oh my. Don't they look so good? Yeah, that's as good as, look, look. as good as, oh, are they falling off the bone? The bone, folks, let me do that again so we can see that. Watch the bone slide all the way out, all by itself. All by itself, that is perfectly that is perfectly, fantastic. there's the bone, there's the meat that was on the bone, there's the bone, this is what you're looking for. Now, these are going into the, into the oven to keep warm. So we're just letting them stand. That's all we're doing is letting them stand so that they will stay warm for service. Cooking's already done. So here's the magic juice. This will be strained through here. And then we will reduce it a little bit for over the top. Remember, Folks, whoever invents smell on the internet is going to be very rich. I will just say that. Without a doubt. You see right there, he's mashing that through the strainer, getting the bits out. You guys really don't know what you're missing without smell of vision. Once again, this is a, a slower process. That's why this is in the creative dishes. You're not going to come home from a hard day at work at 6 o'clock and do this. This is a day off or maybe a Sunday afternoon. I can see a little rain outside, you're working on this, you put this in the oven and a one o'clock kickoff happens for the football and you go watch the game and come back afterwards. Some of my friends like this at Christmas, they like it at New Year's Eve, something that's hearty, good, and tasty without breaking the bank. And I can so see like, you know, they got the nine again, and maybe you got the Patriots and the Chiefs at nine o'clock and you start this on Sunday afternoon. Your buddies come over about seven. Wow. I fall asleep during the game because <laughs> look at that sauce, folks. Oh yeah. Come right back. We're gonna do a few things with this sauce. And then so the sauce is reducing, and while it's reducing, I'm going to heat, reheat some cabbage I did earlier. A colcannon is a Irish dish mashed potatoes and cooked cabbage and ham. And we're gonna do a little different take on it. We're doing we're doing cauliflower cauliflower puree, mashed cauliflower, and American bacon. And we'll have this recipe uh, at heck yeah you can cook at gmail.com. We'll probably have an episode later showing us how to do this, make this. But you can also put this on something else. We're just kinda adding it to the base dish. Absolutely. And we're oh, still reducing over here. I hear it simmering away. Look at that, guys. Everything smells so good. And then we're adding the ham into it. And how long do you let this reheat for? We're just going to reheat this for about five or ten minutes, max. And then we'll mix it with the cauliflower mash. Let it set up. Add a little Kerrygold butter to it. Be ready to serve those ribs over top of it. Once you get nothing better than cherry gold Irish butter, everybody, if you haven't used it, it's, it's worth, worth the extra. It's worth the extra money. It is so good and creamy. Doesn't oh. that look good? Oh. We'll be back in just. Coming this into this cup. 
It'll cool a minute and then the fat will congeal to the top and we can scoop it off. And then you have your wonderful sauce to serve over those ribs. All right, so we got our lovely bowl of mashed cauliflower. We got this lovely cabbage and bacon, Kerrygold butter. You just get that in there and then you mix it. This is a traditional Irish dish and um, you know, it's hearty, it's tasty, and it goes all so good with these ribs. Turn the heat off. Hold it over. Hold it over. Now, traditional Irish, once you've done folding it all in, you let it sit for a little while, and you come back right, and you put a well right in the middle, and you put a hunk of butter in, and you let the butter melt, then you stir it again and serve it. I'm not saying we're going to do that today because these ribs are a little luscious, but if you wanted to do it as a standalone, oh, that's going to be so, so tasty. All right, we'll come back. Ago, let the sauce cool a little bit, take a ladle, and you know, beef ribs are pretty fatty and we will cook them down, so we're just going to skim the majority of the fat off the sauce. How long do you think this has been sitting? about four minutes. You could spit it and let it get even colder, but in the interest of stirring this, that's already come off the top pretty well. I'm going to go ahead and do it. You see the difference? It's getting to get a little bit of the sauce mixed in, so you got to be careful because we're really interested in the fat only, and that helps make it a little healthier dish. Beef ribs and healthy, that's, that's funny. Kind of the contrary, yeah. I know. That beef ribs braised in beer and healthy. Somebody's gonna call the police. It's not fried. <laughs> not at all. It's not fried, smothered, and covered. So we're doing better with that. We just brush it all the set off of it. And we will whisk it again and be ready to pour it over as we serve. I know it has been a long afternoon, and my wife has told me it's been a long afternoon. But here we are going to show it plated. John's taking the, uh, what did you call this Irish? It's called Cannon. It's called Cannon. I guess you have to say it with an Irish accent. You've got to say it with the accent. Put it on a plate. We're going to set the beef rib right into it. Oh. They are fall oh, apart, guys. All right, and there's your. Wait. And we got to add the reduced. Alright, there we go. Everyone have a wonderful meal with this and hope you enjoy. It.